I'm Stephen Bendanoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. Israel continues to uh, fight against uh, Hamas, the Palestinian militant group Hamas, as they continue to rain down rockets on Israel. In fact, uh, the Times of Israel reports here that Hamas tries to target Dimona nuclear reactor with rockets. Now, kind of ironically, Brother Gary Lowry uh, had also mentioned to me, it must have been a couple of months ago, that, uh, they, that, there would, that the uh, Arabs would target the Dimona nuclear reactor plant. And now we actually see clear news that says this. Perez says Gaza uh, ground offensive may happen quite soon as Gaza death toll rises. Abbas accuses Israel of genocide. Rockets uh, land near Zakron Yaakov, 120 kilometers north of, of Strip, lightly injuring one individual there. Now, I am very concerned when uh, Shimon Perez is involved in anything when it comes to Israel's security because he has sold us out to the Vatican to start with. And it's the Vatican that is behind this push in the Muslim community. In fact, it's the Vatican that has sponsored the uh, the Sunni-led group called ISIS. Uh, a lot of people that are that are speculating that this group here, this um, militant group of uh, Muslims, is actually something that is on their own, and that, that they may be a biblical fulfillment. Well, the only biblical fulfillment that they are is that they work as the general and military arm for the Vatican to do nothing else but attack Israel. In fact, my concern for President, uh, or excuse me, for uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is that he take very seriously while he is dealing with Gaza that Gaza may only be a distraction for the Sunni-led group ISIS and their caliphate to make an attack on Israel from the northern border, as well as joining in the fight would be the Lebanese, the group of Hamas that is up in Lebanon, and the Syrian rebel fighters that would love to attack Israel as well. They are calling on a jihad nonetheless. So it is only biblical uh, incidents that are going to be fulfilled that will be in a biblical proportion. <clears throat> I'm speaking with Ray, uh, the original pilgrim from, uh, hang on one second, Ray, is that is that on YouTube, uh, original pilgrim or Facebook or? Both. Both, okay, that's what I was thinking, I wasn't sure. <clears throat> I'm speaking with Ray, the uh, known as the original pilgrim on Facebook and on YouTube. And uh, Ray's got some very interesting uh, things to, to speak to us about. Uh, he's, we've, he's joined us here by, by phone. And uh, Ray, tell me a little bit about what's going on, what Facebook has required of you. Um, uh, d just recently, some just really odd things are happening. They wanted to close down your Facebook account, uh, and they had certain requirements for you to be able to reopen that. Can you share that with us? Uh, they've already shut it down. It's been banned by Facebook without explanation, no explanation offered, unless I submit to them a photo government ID with full information revealing either my location or other trackable information. It says here, um, passport, driver's license, state-issued ID card, military ID card, immigration ID with signature, uh, profile picture is not sufficient. And... Um, and their, their offer is to only give my account back to me, despite the fact that the account has already been wiped clean, uh, if I provide them with uh, official information. This, in my opinion, according to what I know, is unconstitutional and it's illegal. Because, and it needs to be noted and passed around, because sooner or later I really believe that this is going to be happening to more and more people who say the, who say the sorts of things that the government doesn't want them to say. You know? Exactly. I, I think note that this happened right after certain videos that I just put out. Well, you you know, brother, uh, the one thing that concerns me is that uh, this is something that we've really been uh, talking to the people about uh, here on Israeli News as well as on uh, the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. I've been trying to warn the people that I'm very concerned that in the very near future we're going to be... Um, we're going to be shut down, pretty much everyone. Anyone that does not go along with the with the actual uh, the government uh, with, what the government requires of us, we're going to be shut down. In fact, uh, I, I'd been looking into, uh, I'd gotten several reports about where uh, Pope Francis had uh, require or had, had issued a statement saying that 
all the denominational churches must come back to the mother church. And if they don't, they have one year to do so. And if they do not do this, uh, then, you know, they would say, face uh, very serious consequences as a result. And they were told that their money would not help them. Now, uh, a sister from Israel was able to, to bring that up to me and confirm that, yes, it was actually a televised statement, but that was removed. They did not want people to see that, so they did remove it. And also that Truth News had reported this as well, uh, but after one day, Truth News also removed it from their own uh, information. So uh, I can't help but think, Brother Ray, that between the, the, the Vatican controlling the governments of the world, we're going to see a lot more happen uh, in the very near future. The fact that the government and the Vatican are working together, uh, you've got to, you know, falls hand in hand with the uh, the authorities' training manuals, like CIA and all those other guys who have officially listed uh, Jews and evangelical Christians as right-wing extremists. And uh, they've stripped all references to Islam and Muslims from their training manuals. They're not allowed to identify it but they have identified us fully and openly. What's kind of creepy also is that the web link address on the Facebook where this warning was posted to me, this blackmail, we want to know who and where you are, uh, wouldn't copy and paste. Everything else would, but the web link wow. would not copy and paste over, so I, couldn't, so I can't prove to anybody that this warning was up, even though I've got a, a copy of it on, on another Facebook account. That that is fascinating. Uh, also, brother Ray, one other thing I'd like to ask you about real quick before we uh, before we part here on this. Uh, you talked to me a little bit about July 27th with Christine Lagarde and some of the things that she's made reference to, and we know that that's the the ending of Ramadan. Uh, kind of give me a little bit more insight on that, on, on what your thoughts are regarding uh, July 27th of this year and and her comments that she's made. That's kind of interesting. I mean this. You know, if it had been somebody just somebody spouting conspiracy theory, that would be one thing. But this is the managing director of the International Monetary Fund, who says the economical gates of hell will be opened on July 27th. She gave that message in a, a very thinly veiled, uh, cryptic message, on, uh, message uh, lesson that she was giving on numerology, which was kind of weird. What's interesting about Whoa. that is that a year ago iPhone Siri, and everyone ignored it and said, oh, that's kind of interesting and funny and, and laughed it off. But who programs these things into iPhones across the entire nation by accident? iPhone Siri said the gates of hell would open on July 27, 2014. Now the managing director of the INF stands up, fingers the same date, and then after these three Israeli boys were murdered, Hamas, who is backed by the U.S., then turns around and says, just a couple of days ago, the gates of hell will open if Israel dares to respond. And all of this coinciding with the fact that July 27 is the last day of Ramadan, our president's favorite holiday. Yes, he, we know he was celebrating that on July 4th at the beginning of Ramadan uh, versus uh, celebrating the independence of the United States. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, gosh, I tell you, brother, this is, is so serious. And uh, I will make sure, too, that this news broadcast actually gets into the hands of uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and some of his cabinet ministers as well. Um, you know, but I, I, of course, I'm concerned as well. I know in the Israeli government, we've got Jesuits here. We've got Shimon Peres, who's nothing but a uh, son of Ahab and a traitor to our own people. Um, but, uh, Brother Ray, we'll, we'll definitely, I'd love to have you back on again in the very near future. And I thank you for being, being with us today and sharing these things with us. And, uh, You're and, welcome. It's my pleasure. Amen. And, and, and definitely, the more you can uncover on that, I want to bring more of this information to the light of the people because I think we're recording and uh, distributing the information on borrowed time. Uh, yeah, it's just definitely. a matter of time. Amen. Definitely. God bless you, my brother. Shalom. God bless you, too. We have other breaking news in Israel of uh, something that is very serious that is going on, and uh, uh, Israel's national news, Israel National News has uh, put this out. And I uh, thank Brother Aaron, our uh, host on Noteworthy News on our website, brought this to my attention here just moments ago. And the uh, article reads here: "Exclusive status quo changed at David's tomb." Uh, the Knesset Interior Committee meeting. 
uh, express hidden, a hidden deal with Christians uh, soon, no Jews at David's tomb. And that was the title of the article here, highlighting the article in a Knesset Interior Committee meeting on Monday, uh, chaired by M.K. Miriam Regev of the Likud party. It was revealed that Christians received permission to hold fixed prayers at David's, uh, David's tomb compound in breach of status quo that threatens Jewish prayer rights. Uh, Rabbi uh, Simcha uh, Hakohen Cook Chief Rabbi of Rehovot and Rabbi of the Cherova Synagogue in Jerusalem's Old City took part in the committee meeting and told Arut Sheva about the serious implication of what was revealed. Last Thursday, the Israeli government announced there is a status quo in practice. Last Sunday, they let, uh, the, let them, the Christians, uh, that is. Now, it's funny, they call it the Christians. Catholic Church is not Christians. And, and let me just make that clear. The true Christians are the Christians that stand with Israel, that love the Jewish people and would do anything in the world for, for Israel because they understand that the time will come when Israel will recognize who Mashiach is, who the Messiah is. And, and true believers in Yeshua would never come and just try to throw Jewish people out because they know that the Jewish people need to have their own eyes open so they have a love and a respect for the Jewish people knowing that the hour will come when God will deal with us as in his own time and in his own way. So it's kind of ironic here. They call it Christians, but they're, I like the, really the way the rabbi puts it. Let them. See, he knows they're not Christians, but the... the the, uh, of course, they have to do it in the article to let you understand who it is. I should have just said the Catholics instead. Pray from, uh, from 8 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon nonstop. Jews who wanted to pray, uh, to pray there, were not allowed to enter uh, the David's, David's tomb compound, revealed Rabbi Cook. And you guys think that I'm kidding when I say that the, that the Vatican has taken control they certainly they've taken control. They are they have gotten as a uh, the prophecy written in the Christian Bible of Revelation 11. They would tread the holy city for underfoot for 40 and two months. And believe me, Mount Zion outside those walls that were built by the Turks is part of the old city. It's it's it was there. They're standing on that ground. Anyway, let's let's read a little bit further in this right here, so you're aware of of what I'm talking about. In early June, just weeks after the Pope's Francis visit. Israel uh, controversial led mass prayer services at this site. Now, of course, that was in the upper room at that time, right? But what it states in the article here, in the room of the Last Supper, where it was at on the second floor, and, and, and even in the very room of King David's tomb marker. You see, friends, you have to understand, under Jewish law, halakha law, you cannot have, you, a Jew cannot go in a Christian place where there is, where you have all types of effigies there, all types of statues and, and, and things where they, they, they worship at. And the Vatican is chief in the sin of idols. They're an idolatry, idolistic place. And to think that Shimon Perez allowed the Vatican to come in and have control in Israel? I mean, Shimon Perez, you are guilty as Ahab's son of bringing Jezebel's daughter back into Israel and marrying in amongst these people. It is a shame. It's a shame on you, uh, Mr. Perez. Anyway, uh, let me just continue on. Rabbi Cook, uh, wait a minute, uh, hang, I'm sorry, back up just a little bit in the article. Today we are close to the situation in which no Jew will be able to enter David's tomb. Already today there are rabbis who claim that if there is a church above, it's forbidden to pray below. Note to Rabbi Cook. Rabbi Cook said, Regev uh, reminded in the discussion that this is how it was at the Temple Mount too. Uh, at the start, they led them Enter, they let them enter, and today Jews can't pray there. And while it is an issue of halakhic uh, uh, Jewish legal debate, the reality speaks for itself. According to the basic laws of Israel, it is forbidden to change anything in holy sites, particularly if it harms another religi religious and uh, religious. Excuse me, harms another religion. And, and here they're bringing crosses into the tomb of King David. Remarked the rabbi. How are, we not, uh, how are we not embarrassed before King David? It's awful. 
what we have to come to. King David who, un who unified all of the people of Israel. And here we are disconnecting from the entire Jewish world because if we throw King David's as uh, David aside like this, how can we complain about others? Reason to Rabbi Cook. Uh, I think the article, you should read this article, is very important. Comment on it. Uh, and uh, we need to stir the world up. You know, really and truly what's coming down to is Mashiach is going to return, and he's the only one that is going to be able to restore order in such a chaotic matter. I'm Stephen Ben-Danun. You're watching Israeli News Live.